Was that again? The move? What did you move? Yeah, yeah, that's that's right. That's that's how we're bringing in Strength right. Hammer, episode ninety four, hot 94. off, yeah, hot off the heels of uh, right. my guest appearance on Warhammer Weekly this week. Oh, mm. that's great! Are they running out of people to invite? Is that what's happening? I'm the I'm you know this. He's like, hey Chuck, uh, no one wants to get on here. I I need you. I'm like, okay, I got you. Finally, yeah. We're at the bottom oh, of the barrel. I can. I'm here. No, I'm kidding. Okay. Um, uh, no, it was fun. It's always great to be on there with Vince uh, and his his only guest, Tom. <laughs> that's great. Um, what yeah, are you guys talking about? We're talking about new AOS news. Um, uh, we're all excited about Spearhead and what it's looking like. It's bringing. Uh, we're all like, it's manifestations and endless spells are fine, and we're all like, battle tactics are not great. <laughs> mm, I look at manifestation rules, and obviously it's not what we talk about in this segment, but they actually, I kind of like them. I really like that they're like their own units almost now. Yeah, to be fair, the only thing I don't like about them, and like, go watch the Warhammer Weekly to see the full details on the on that. We might talk about the news briefly on the next segment, but regardless, I just don't like that I'm forced to bring extra crap now. Yeah, I mean, yeah. you don't have. To, right? I, I don't. I don't have to, but you know, yeah. I will. Um, and, then, and I hope they write the rules good for them, because if there's, like, one standout, it's just going to be like, well, okay. Right. But, like, right, right. It's a, regardless. Um, <laughs> yeah, so, Alex, how you doing? Yes. How you doing? What's, what's, think, what's going on? Man, I'm doing so well. Good. Well, good. I actually, realistically, I just got over a sickness, had a long weekend where I barely slept, and I have, like, a low-grade infection I'm dealing with, so oh. I'm nodding, but... <laughs> attitude is key attitude I am is key positive. i am doing probably the best today out of the last six days that's good um try to go to the gym yesterday i think it was yesterday two days ago sucked it was one of the worst workouts i've had in like years <laughs> i think really just weak just like uh, just right barely move yeah uh, but feeling better and i think today or tomorrow i'm going to get to the gym and probably have a better workout oh yeah there you go that's that's the way it is um, right. Yeah, can't can't really complain about that. I've had a great Monday workout as usual, nice little upper day. Uh, yesterday, <laughs> I woke up to my cat having puked all over my gym shoes, and I'm talking inside and out. It was not that good. Is so sad. Was it, it Rose? It was Rose. Uh, she, she's walk. She, like as I as I found it, she's walking around like eating food. Like she's no no problem. So. Oh, yeah, it's like whatever. I got more shoes um, as I'm dr washing and drying the other ones out in the sun. Thankfully, it was nice yesterday. Mm -hmm. um, but and I realized like, well, let me just do something fun and different. Let me just pick up some heavy things. I have some Atlas stones yeah. from light to moderate weight, and I have the hammer you got me uh, right. for Christmas. So I was like, let me just do some hammer workouts and had some fun with that in the backyard. And I was like, that's a good workout. It looked great. Yeah, I wanna. I wanna. When the weather is nice, I wanna come down and we can do it together. That'd we do. Really fun. Yeah, and since like I, I was doing like a serious workout, not like you do it once or twice, um, like I was right. doing like sets and reps of it, uh, I realized like you know like the this way is fine. Mm -hmm. This way, like right here, is like a weird sticking point as I get tired very quickly. Do you switch grips, going different directions? Oh no, I didn't. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. But it's easier. I haven't done it for a while, but I believe it's easier to lean into whatever arm is on top. Hmm. Yeah. You want to switch it. Yeah, for sure, how it works. Yeah, yeah, I'll give it a go. That's that's fun. Um, but mm -hmm. yeah, thank you again for that gift. Because I... yeah, yeah, of course, of course, nice. it's a fun one. Yeah, it Ooh, is. Yeah. There is one other Warhammer Fitness thing. Uh, pull ups for the Emperor just wrapped up yesterday. Oh, that's right. How'd they go for everybody? It went really well. We did uh, with a few guys. Uh, probably probably about twenty guys who were like really committed and like okay. did it every day or like made up for it if they didn't do it. Like yeah, me. Yep. Uh, did a hundred pull ups yesterday to make up for it. Dang. And there were also 
a lot of people just participating here and there, just like encouraged to do pull-ups. Yes. Like about a hundred total, just like doing pull-ups in general. Right. Some guys, some guys who couldn't do pull-ups would just do assisted pull-ups and girls. There were some ladies who joined. Um, some people who just could not do pull-ups and not feel comfortable even with assisted, they would do like bicep curls or something else. Yeah, sure. Uh, so it was a pretty, pretty fun challenge. Shout out to Squared Paints, recent Golden Demon winner. <gasps> I think he, and I don't, don't, I don't remember quite which category or which place he got, but he does have Golden Demon. And uh, yeah, he is a pretty strong guy. He's been mm -hmm. doing the pull-ups with me. Um, also, shout out to World's Strongest Warhammer. Yeah. He did. He was committed. He did 70 pull-ups on his last day uh, as well. While he's... Up. Yeah, he's he's doing a, a fitness challenge while prepping for Britain's Strongest Man. Crazy. Wild. It's awesome. Wild. Yeah, he's a wild man. He's awesome. Yeah, he is. You know, I, I'm going to put... Uh, I'll put links to both of those down below. Squared Paints and World's Strongest Warhammer because they're both yeah. great people. So Great guys. Great dudes. Um... Trying to, oh, I lost my train of thought here. Dang, <laughs> sorry. Uh, it, it, it will play into our, our topic this morning. Mm -hmm. But, um, oh, uh, that's it. there's some news. So, uh, right now, Alex, the war, uh, yeah. Uh, Tell me more. They're, they're, I'm going to bring it up right now. I'm going to bring it up right now. The uh, tw 2024 World's Strongest Man is happening. What? Boom. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's underway yesterday as the time of this recording. So, by the time this goes out... We should be through the uh, group stages. Um, right. has, has happened. The um, way World's Strongest Man works, if you're unaware, is they have, was it five groups? Yep. And five groups of five si seven, two, three, four, five, oh, no, five groups of six. I apologize. Can't count mm -hmm. this morning. Um, and they will do uh, their group stages. So in this case, it's Webster Stones, which is kind of like the Dinny Stones uh, as far as structure. Uh, I'm not, I don't think the weight is as heavy because it's a little bit longer walks with it then a deadlift ladder sandbag steeplechase so it's like a, you have various weights of, of sandbag and you have to go load them onto an implement um that was yesterday uh and then today at the time of recording there's gonna be a viking press and a car walk which is essentially just a uh um uh, a yoke okay. walk that's a little bit yeah. awkward uh and then if there's any ties there'll be a stone off between the two two people ties because the first two people in every group will go on to the finals. So, yeah, uh, great. Yeah, and as I was telling Alex earlier, this one's really hard to follow because they don't broadcast it live when it happens. <laughs> they Very have sad. some yeah, there's some deal, and I get it, money involved. Some deal with ESPN or something. I, I don't know who, but uh, so this won't be shown the full competition until. Yeah months later so the only way you need you can keep up on this is one coming here to strongman archives which i will put in the link yeah because um, they update it regularly also mm -hmm. over on youtube big laws loz and eddie hall a uh, former world's strongest man do recaps as they can now they can't show video full video of like the competition but they can talk about what's going on what they're seeing so um and, and both of them talk directly to the strongman, so it's uh, that's well worth your while. I'll try and link them below as well. <laughs> Lots yes. of links today, everybody. Please do. But uh, that said, uh, there's some fun fun ones. Some of the more known ones uh, are doing okay. Luke Stoltman from Scotland is second in his group, uh, but he's tied with Eddie Williams, who's uh, an Australian strongman with a golden voice. If you ever if you ever look him up. Um, group two. Uh, Mitch Hooper is crushing it at the top, as we all expect. Um, I'm a little sad. Nick Camby, the, the Camby dude, the, the Italian strongest man, mm -hmm. he's not having a good show. Um, he's, yeah. he's sitting at the bottom, but hey, uh, he's there, which means he will be back, and that's good to see. Right. And then, uh, I'm trying to think, uh, Group Three, my, you know, Rob Kearney's kind of like the favorite. It's he's retiring after this, mm -hmm. uh, this one. He's not having a great one, but you know. Who cares? He's still strong as hell. <laughs> and it's right. fun. fun. He's a fun guy to watch compete. Um, mm -hmm. And then group four, I'm rooting for Evan Singleton because he's just... He, he was at uh, the Arnold, Alex, when we were there, but he's the one that yes. dropped because of... A, 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 right. Yeah. He had an injury and apparently uh, uh, car theft and stuff. I don't know. Oh, oh that's right. Yeah. yeah he was... 
he he only dropped like halfway through, right? Yeah, yeah. He it, like I'm, I'm I watched like his YouTube channel after that to see he ripped all the skin off of his one hand. Like he couldn't compete. That's wild. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then uh, the final stage, uh, Luke or, or Tom Stoltman, uh, another world's strongest man, multiple times is sitting at the top right now. So, um, yep. I honestly feel personally from my time as strongman, it's going to come down to Luke and and Mitch to, to yeah. win it all. Um, yeah. It'd be fun to see Luke uh, Stoltman and Eddie Williams maybe uh, push them and be little dark horses there. But hey, yep. it is what it is. Who knows, man? It's going it's to be exciting to see who makes it to the finals and then uh, and then go from there. Yes. Yeah. And inside, I'll be keeping up on it as much as I can, but I'll put the links so everyone can as well to the point that we're allowed to do so. That's right. But Alex. Yes. What's today's topic? Today's topic is how to get the best gains with minimal effort. That's true. How also to have... Um, Improve your mental health. Uh, yep. Speed up your metabolism. Energy. Yeah. Better recovery at the gym. Mm -hmm. Lower risk of injury. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is this is the number one hack there's ever been. Absolutely. Uh, and you have to do nothing for it, which is crazy. Yeah, like literally nothing. It's it's just lay down and breathe. Uh, I yeah. failed at it last night. <laughs> <laughs> I have often failed at it. So we're talking about sleep and the importance of sleep for just. Specifically, health and fitness, but just overall general health as well. Yep. So, sleep. How many hours of sleep do you usually get, Chuck Moore? I am pretty good getting between seven and eight. Uh, That's yeah, around around seven and a half, I tend to naturally want to wake up. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm I've I I guess we'll talk about my sleep my sleep journey, huh? Yep. Yeah. So uh, my prior job, before the one I'm at now, I had to drive an hour and ten minutes one way for work, and I'd be there mm -hmm. at seven. So you know, I'm trying to do stuff with the, with my wife and friends. So I was getting between five and six hours of sleep, just for for years. Yeah. Um. Now, can you function? Yes. Like right now, I have probably about five and a half hours sleep last night. Am I functioning? Yeah, I'm functioning. I'll get through the day. Absolutely. I have I have my my coffee. Um, I'll I'll do what I can. Like I'll maybe get a nap in later. Is it ideal? No. Yeah, absolutely not. Yeah, I I I can tell mentally that I'm subpar in my thought, my thinking. Um, it's not as clear. Energy is worse. Yeah. Um, I'm sore than I probably should be after yesterday's workout. Just just a, just a whole mess of things. Yeah. Um. Uh, jump forward to now, where I work from home, so I can get my time, and I, I make sure I get to bed on time. Uh, maybe my sleep timing's off. Like maybe I'm going to bed too late, which is fine. But like I still get the seven, seven and a half, eight hours. But using a sleep tracker has helped me more than anything else. Absolutely. Uh, now mine's a fun one. It's Pokemon Sleep. <laughs> but regardless, it's a sleep tracker, and it also encourages you because Pikachu sounds sad if you go to sleep past your bedtime that you set it's it's hilarious but um, uh, that's great but i have seen improvements in my just general health and day-to-day -day well being from getting that sleep i feel you know and like i'm not wasting my gains mm -hmm. that's right so a lot of people tend to think that they're missing out on life when they get enough sleep right they're missing out on staying up late and doing things, playing video games, hobbying, um, going to the gym even, right? And the reality is when you get good sleep, it improves your quality of life and energy and productivity enough that you can get to do more with less time. Right. Feel better about doing it, right? So for anybody here who says, and I certainly understand if you're you know, married and have a newborn or trying to provide for your family, you have to make sacrifices sometimes, yeah. right? You absolutely do. But the reality is, for most people, if you look at how much time you spend on your phone, right? Look at how much time you spend watching television or whatever it may be, you could find time to get a bit more sleep. For most people, right? Right. Individual case by case basis. But the reality is, if you can get good sleep and you get good sleep, you will actually enjoy life more and see more progress with health and fitness, not less. Right. And like I said, as you said, it it's not a big deal. Like there's gonna be 
days, like like so last night, I knew it was gonna be out late. Cause, uh, my friend had a big, big thing to celebrate. Um, you know, kept it very low key on any sort of consumption of of anything. I, but like, I knew it was gonna be out late and up late. Right. Um. So like, you right. those days are gonna happen, and don't shy away from it. it's like it's like whenever you have that one bad, you have that cookie. It's like don't beat yourself up. Just have it. But if you're continually doing it over and over again, it's when there's negative repercussions. So. Alex, I have to ask you, how's your sleep? How's my sleep? Well, it's funny because in as a health and fitness coach, you know, there is all health fitness coaches struggle with something they preach, right? Mm -hmm. For me, nutrition, excellent. Relationships, community, excellent. Exercise, unless I'm sick, usually excellent, right? Not struggling with all of those. Sleep, I have to confess, is a tough one, <laughs> right? Yeah. I go and see and... Uh, you know, I'm just coming out of a season where I had to really push myself a little bit for various reasons and kind of rely a bit more on caffeine and naps throughout the day. And I would say on average six to eight hours of sleep, which is still good, right? But occasionally I would sleep in five hours of sleep or four and a half hours of sleep here and there just because of life, Yeah. right? Now, I am finally starting to feel the effects of it and getting to the season of, okay, let's intentionally lower caffeine intake. Let's intentionally set habits to go to bed earlier and cut out certain things after bedtime. Right. Um, so yeah. it's one, it's something that I actively have to deal with because I do personally struggle with like, well, I need to get this thing done. So I'm going to push myself a little bit too far and occasionally go for those seasons. But I recognize that I need to get out of that season for it to not have negative long term effects almost. Right. Yeah. And it's it, there is a thing too. like there's there's ways to help. Like, uh, I guess, get yourself into a rhythm. Like you said, uh, cutting back on caffeine. Because caffeine is a very is a very long half-life in your bloodstream, people don't realize. Yeah. Like, it's like, oh, I have two cups of coffee. Like, I know, it, it stays in your body a lot longer. Um, Correct. Now, you can be, the more you drink it, the more, kind of like the it tolerance was, you build up you to. Absolutely, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so like, I'm, I have probably about no more than 300 milligrams a day <clears throat> for an yeah. average day. <clears throat> yeah today might be like a four or five right, right, right. <laughs> you need to get for the day and stay also be productive yeah um, but you can also take things too like uh i know some people get good results from melatonin to help fall asleep early um obviously the blue light uh limit limiting um is is a good way to help keep your brain like help it auto turn off um, i've even seen some people now like high level athletes that turn their blue light filter on so it's on all the time they're yeah. like just like what yeah. just why subject myself to it at all if i can avoid yeah. it let the natural absolutely. sun be be that blue light i need absolutely so so uh yeah so we established that getting good sleep is important right nobody if you can get good sleep right mm -hmm. build more muscle you lose more fat you lower risk of heart attack long term lower risk of all chronic illnesses better energy better productivity lower risk of injury, right? Mm -hmm. The hard thing is a lot of people, I think, understand they need to get more sleep, but they struggle with practically how does that look like, right? Right. <clears throat> practically, step one, just allow yourself enough time to get enough sleep, right? If you go to bed at 11 and you have to wake up at five, it's just, it's not going to happen. Right. right? You're not going to get Number one is get into a routine. You allow for seven to nine hours of sleep. It depends on the person, but you allow for that, right? And Go ahead. Yeah, I, was, I say I've. Um, I'm trying to think. My my wife shared it with me. Um, it's it's some newer studies. Like it's still like not. It's it's coming out there. It's not like I, I wouldn't say it's one study. So take with it what okay. you want. Sure. Um, but they're starting to realize because like a lot of the sleep studies in the past that we're aware of were done on men, that women might actually need that nine more than they need eight, whereas men can get away with less just from our physiology. So, you know, keep... I have heard of it as well. Yes. Yeah. So like look it up yourself <laughs> but yeah uh, that's something that's kind of a newer thing coming out about it absolutely and yeah and honestly realistically it, it varies significantly from person to person mm -hmm. right just with me just having exposure to a lot of people i work with i had a the one case i can think of i had a client who consistently needed 10 hours of sleep yeah. and once we actually got and it was just crazy right it's a lot of time to be sleeping but you're only awake for 12, 14 hours right but he actually, once he did that consistently, he was feeling so much better and was getting so much more done throughout the day. Like the mental fog lifted, the poor energy, the yep. lack of lack of desire to go to the gym and exercise, like all those things lifted. So even though he was sleeping more, he was doing feeling his life with so many more productive good things. Right. 
Yeah, and and right. also keep in mind, we're not talking like there's people out there like that have chronic illnesses that are going to change that drastically different. So, right. you know, right. that that's a very different thing. But also, I, the one thing I know is too, when I've gotten to a good sleep habit, if I realize I like slept through my alarm right. and I'm like eight and a half hours, I'm like, and I didn't do anything strenuous or difficult or anything like you know other than gym session parmy goes am i trying my body's clearly trying to fight something off it wanted me to sleep longer like am i yes. am i starting to catch a cold or like you know a sinus infection so then i can kind of take preemptive like you know let me take a let me get me sure i have my vitamin c and my zinc today let me get some vitamin d out in the sun and i'm i i don't know for sure but maybe i avoided a few minor illnesses because of just knowing what my sleep is and absolutely Immunity, your immunity improves by about 50% if you have better quality sleep. Yeah. People who sleep seven, nine hours compared to those sex or less, immunity is about, actually not 50%, I think it's, I, I am very rusty on that study now, but I think it's a few times better <laughs> than, nice. regardless, it is better. Your immunity yeah. is much better, so risk of catching illnesses, risk of recovery, um, you know, recovery from injury or damage to your body, so which would include building muscle mm -hmm, right mm -hmm. what is building muscle it's tearing down tissue and you're recovering it the rest of the day or rest yeah. of the week uh, the reality <laughs> is if you're not getting good sleep you're missing out on gains yeah so, being big and strong is very easy you just have to eat food work hard and sleep a lot sleep a lot recovery <laughs> That's it. is a part of people miss right it's especially people with a type a like go-getters personality they yeah. love which is good they yeah. love to work out and push themselves and eat appropriately but then they have a hard time stopping and actually letting their body recover right Right. So it's, it's very important. Uh, but yeah, getting seven to nine hours as much as you can, I do recommend going to bed and waking up at a similar time. Yes. I know it's very hard in, in, in our fast paced culture with lots of schedules and um, just do the best you can. Some people literally cannot do that. But as much as you can, going to bed at a similar time, waking up at a similar time. Yeah. One couple of things you uh, I said, when I when I was getting my sleep in line and I said through the even through like the Pokemon sleep. Cool. Yeah, it's great. It was like, okay, I want to get eight hours of sleep. I wake up at this time for work. This is the, this is the when I need to wake up for work. So it was just mm -hmm. do the math backwards and like, okay, I need to be in bed by eleven thirty. Um, do I hit it? Yeah, I hit it probably about ninety percent of the time. Every once in a while, it's just like ah, I was up to twelve thirty, hanging out with friends online, playing hell divers, yeah. but that's fine, yeah. you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. I, 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 Health and fitness things we say and encourage are things to increase your enjoyment of life, and they will, but there's a certain level where you have to cut down on them to allow you to enjoy life still, right? Yeah. The same thing with diet, same thing with exercise. Like, if you had to skip your workout to go to somebody's birthday party, like, just do it, right? Yeah. <laughs> just find just a way go, to work yeah. out later or, or skip that workout. Like, that's not a big deal because the goal is to enjoy life more, not less. Right. And here's the other interesting thing, tying this it back into uh, uh, Warhammer, because uh, we know mm -hmm. we get our gains in. That's good. So Warhammer events are oftentimes parties with friends in the evening, you know, because sure. you don't see a lot of people. Um, yes. There has been a few times where I'm just like, you know, I'm just tired. You know, I'm going to I'm going to call a night early. I went out, had you know, dinner and a drink with with, you know, the group of people I was with. I was like, you know, what, let me call an early, early night and just go to bed. And every time I've done that, <clears throat> you will be astounded at how well I do the next day because you're it, it, it's, it's a hack. Two, two hacks for, for Warhammer events. Prep your food. So, have, like, meal prep your food and get sleep before during the events. Like, as, like because people are going to be walking in without that. Yes. You're already so far ahead from the people who are yeah. out, out, you know, eating and drinking all night. You're just like, man, I got this game in the bag. It's great. <laughs> Being mentally healthy and sharp is, is definitely a big part of it. Right. I absolutely agree. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's fine. But yeah. perfect. Yeah, get sleep. Uh, I suggest Sleep Tracker. Uh, I like mm -hmm. the Pokemon one because it's fun and I like Pokemon too much. Uh, yeah. But do what you need to do. Um, and then, you know, and also I, I would say reach out to Alex to, to help get some help. He'll he'll lie to your face and says he sleeps like a baby. No, he won't. <laughs> actually, I don't say that. I say you need sleep. I'm not saying I practice it. <laughs> actually, I just realized now as I'm looking at the, the recording setup, um, I have forgotten to add your name officially to like our little thing on the side, so I'm going to get that corrected between the cuts here. <laughs> That's fine. So you're saying I can leave because I'm not officially part of the podcast. Yet. Oh, no, you're going to be officially part when I put that little pixel in there, and it's it's good to go. You've been in the comments below, so. 
All right, all right, I'll take it. <laughs> um, all right, but anyway, to wrap up our time with Alex, this lovely episode 94th Strength Hammer Podcast, what's your hobby, Ben? I know you've been down, oh, yeah. you've been down there, but like, are you getting any hobby in? Uh, yes, a little bit. So I actually, for some reason, I've been really encouraged to do more 40K lately. I don't know why. I played 40K last night. So yeah, I... That's yeah, yeah. You play your Dark Angels or your real Dark Angels? My Dark Angels. Brought them out for some fun. Very cool. Very cool. But anyway. Yeah, sorry. I'd love to do that edition yet, so I would love to do that. And uh, I've been really, like, really wanted to paint 40K and build 40K. So I have uh, this random box of Necrons here Ooh. Uh, going to build. And then I have Space Frames I pulled out and um, a old, um, not old, a Warhammer TV, Warhammer Plus Ter Terminator. Um, oh, as, yeah, yeah, the, the, the Corn Terminator. He's pretty cool. Yeah. Corn Terminator. Um, the uh, so I've just been really wanting to paint 40K for some reason. There you go. Right. Yeah, like be, yeah. A, be a hobby butterfly. There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So I'm just going to build it for a little bit and maybe prime and paint a couple models. That's going to be my hobby for next week or so. That sounds awesome. Well, yeah. uh, we'll, we'll jump over. At... <clears throat> Sorry. <clears throat> well, I'm in my throat here. It's still, it's still, that's not Auto early morning. Production. Yeah, it's not early morning, but it's, you know, I, I wake up and this is the first conversation I've had in a day and like my, my body's like, why are you talking for a half hour straight? <laughs> um, but uh, we're going to cut over. It's going to be me and Matt today because we're going to be talking about Ooh. our recent uh, tournament. Our final GT will be attending for AOS 3.0. Uh, so good. we'll jump over there. We'll do... Uh, a little bit of AOS news. We'll do some hobby time there, there and we'll talk about the event. So Sounds exciting. Yeah. We'll catch you guys over there. And welcome back to the Strength Hammer Podcast with the one, the only, the big M, the Power Hour. Mr. Is it Mr. Power Hour or is it Mr. Power or is it Mr. Hour? Um, uh, well, my father was, was Mr. Power Hour. I'm just Power Hour. Oh, you're Power Hour. Okay. <laughs> All right, Power Hour. <laughs> I'm just happy to be here. <laughs> <clears throat> so, um, real quick, Matt, before uh, we dive into the Warhammer side, um, yes. due to the magic of recording multiple times in the same day, uh, there's some news to follow up that I mentioned earlier. This is a, if you uh, are listening now, which I assume you are, you uh, heard us talking about the World's Strongest Man competition that's going on right now. Well, we are through the heats, so real quick, we have some finalists. We'll be going on tomorrow to the finals for the next two days. Uh, let's see, from ooh, Austin Andrade, Andrade, there you go, Mexico, a uh, Wesley Derwinski, I don't know who that is either, a Tristan Hoth, who seems to be a very strong underdog out of nowhere, Mitchell Hooper, crowd favorite, and my pick to choose uh, to win the World's Strongest Man event. And then from Ukraine, we have uh, Pavlo Kordiaka. Gotta ruin that name. <laughs> New Zealand, <laughs> Matthew Rag. That's a good one. Evan Singleton, another favorite of mine to uh, go all the way. Uh, from, I think, Latvia. Avaraz Smaskostelis. Sounds about right. And then the Stoltman brothers. So there you go. Just a little update from that. Uh, tune into next Power Hour where we talk about the winners at the start of this podcast. We're not talking about that at Power Hour. Sorry. Oh, sorry. I did say Power Hour. I just, sorry. It's all the jokes. See? The jokes. The jokes. The next Strength Hammer podcast. Sorry. <laughs> See, again, this is why it's called the Power Hour. It just rolls, man. It I, does, I can't help listen, it. I, listen, one day I'm going to just kick you off this show so you can actually go get the numbers you deserve. <laughs> you just have a channel called Power Hour. Within a week, you have more subscribers than me. I bet that will happen. Blah, blah, blah. I doubt it. Blah, 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 blah. Well, anyway, Matt, how are you doing? Doing good. How are you doing? Oh. I'm doing well. Sorry, doing well. Dave, if you're watching. I'm doing well. Dave, I'm doing good. <laughs> I'm doing that goodness. I'm doing darn tootin' well, you know? <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. I'm good. Um, yeah, just good day. Good day so far at work because I <laughs> recorded with Alex before work and I'm recording with you after work. So it's a fun. <laughs> I've had a day actually, so it's been it's been good. Body sandwich. <laughs> Yay! But the, the work in between is not a good, delicious. Mm, 
beef patty between some buns. Anyway, <laughs> Matt, we have to go on to yes. the hobby segment. What hobby yes. have you been getting on to lately? What's what's going on? And let's not talk about games because that's what we're talking about in the main topic tonight. I'm continuing to paint little naked dwarves. And you should be done with those in like a week. What are you doing? Take it. Milking those. Yeah. You're milking well, that content. I'm, uh, yes, I am. Uh, well, again, so I'm trying to help my my buddy Tyler. So we're having a, uh, like a one to two hour painting sesh every Monday. So um, other than that, it's like, I, I haven't really been in the mood to paint. So it's like, I kind of just take that time and I don't push myself. And otherwise I've been just doing gaming and stuff like that. Yeah, that's, that's fair. I get that. I get that. Sometimes you just don't feel like it, but you do it enough. Right. Is it... Well, like I said, I think I'm still I'm still recovering from all of the painting I've done previously. Yeah, <laughs> because the... unlike you, I can't stand it. <laughs> <laughs> Surprisingly, right now the thing I can't stand is building because I have a bunch of stuff to build, and I'm like, thankfully I'm getting help, but I I I can't be asked to do it. It's 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 rough. I'm I'm doing it, but I'm excited to get my my most recent purchase built. Ooh. Yay. All right, throw that away. Ooh, put that on the ground. Throw that. <laughs> get, get that out of here. Uh, if everyone if everyone just saw that, I apologize. Here's something refreshing and tasteful for you to look at. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, my. How about that? I want something else to build. All right, Yay. that's a little better. That's there a little better. Is that better for you? That's better, yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the bit continues of me not liking Con- Conquest just because you like it so much. <laughs> uh, my hobby... Uh, has been uh, Black Talents. They're on my painting desk. They are primed and washed. Need to get some detail work on them here soon. Uh, some GW work, which is building, which, like I said, I'll get that done probably by this weekend with some help. And uh, also preparing for an upcoming video series that I alluded to. Uh, if you've watched Warhammer Weekly this week, um, I will be doing a Tale of Four Warlords with a couple of local, semi-local, it's the Ohio boys, Um for the old world, so expect more from that soon. Uh, actually, I think next week you should see something on that. So, but me, you, you, sp- yeah, Matt, are, have you liked and subscribed to the channel? Yeah, yeah, on you, all of surprised. on all of your YouTube accounts. Most of them, yeah. Mm, most of them. Okay, gotcha. <laughs> all of my videos, yes. That's all. Oh, okay, okay, okay. All right, <laughs> perfect. Gotcha. Um, yes, yeah, so that's my hobby. Just a little bit of. Casual stuff, uh, about to dive into a new army. I technically still have a Napoleonic's army that's built and primed. Can't believe you haven't finished that yet. I know. I don't feel I like remember. starting it. First of the year. <laughs> yeah, that failed. Uh, we're, we're apparently going to be playing that sometime in July, so we'll see how that goes. You're going to be playing it in July, whenever you're already quadruple booked and you have a new edition of AOS coming out. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> you know me. That sounds right. <laughs> just nothing for a little bit, and then just everything all at once, everywhere. <laughs> oh boy. Okay, so Matt, yes. got you on tonight. One because Neil needed a, yet another break. He's he's doing his best. He's he's he can't keep up with this onslaught of once a week podcast recording. Uh, <laughs> and I and I say that jokingly, knowing he will listen to this and be like mad at. The camera that he does not have turned on. <laughs> um, it's okay. He'll be back next week as we talk um, Tomb Kings, everybody. Next week's an old world show. That's right. Get back at it. But this week, I got Matt on. Yep. As Matt and I went to our final AOS 3rd edition GT. Potentially. <laughs> what? I have a I have a one day or in a couple of weeks. What do you have? do? You have something lined up? Um, well, uh, Fabricator Forge announced that they are going to have a GT, a two day GT, July twentieth. And if it if fourth edition is out, it'll be fourth edition. If not, it'll be third edition. I would assume that's fourth edition because end of July is very, very likely considering the track record. Well, so again, I go with old GW. Yes. No problem. By the second week of July, we'll have it. New GW. <laughs> it may go on pre-order uh, the like the week before. It might do like a two-week pre-order. 
going into release of the weekend thereof, but then being out of stock within 40 seconds, and then we'll get uh, we'll get the rest in September. No, see, because this this number goes to the bottom line to the shareholders, so they'll make sure they get That's this true. one right. Other ones, go fuck <laughs> yourself. This one, they will be fine on. So, uh, yes, let's. I can I can keep the title. The clickbait is here. The final Age Sigmar Third Edition GT for for me and Matt. Got to got to always have a caveat on that. So yeah, Fabricators Forge, uh, Warpstone Wars GT twenty twenty four, run by uh, Seth Harvey and Ben Kloss. Um, great event, Matt. Let's let's start high level before we go into games. Yeah. Would you uh, what you think of the event? I mean, we it's this is the first GT that I've been there with them. That they're the ones running it. Yeah. What'd you think? Yeah. Uh, I mean, it, it, you can always tell the difference. Uh, again, it, first preference preface that you know anytime uh, any time spent at the, at the forge is a good time. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, being this uh, the first full um, GT where the the competitiveness has been peeled back a little bit, you have a pack that's been written by uh, people that actually. Listen, play, listen here. Watch. Listen here. This is the first time we've been to this fucking event, and half the field hasn't been wicked dicey and fucking Team America. Yeah, it's been fucking nice. <laughs> it was great. It was great not to r- play four games as if I'm trying to win a fucking tournament. All right, it was wonderful. <laughs> I love, I love, yeah, so... I love every single person on Team America and Wicked Dicey. You're all wonderful gems. All right, I'm not at your skill level. It hurts to play you five times in a row. All right, that's all I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's good to not be, uh, you know, I don't know, Team Brazil for five rounds. Since <laughs> <laughs> Alex, no, Brazil can win stuff. Um, but no, it was great. It was great. I was, uh, I was super happy to get out there and throw some dice around. And uh, yeah. wish I would have got a little more uh, practice games in. But that I, every time it's it's the intent. But every time I know it ain't gonna happen. That's fair. Yeah, my high level. Yeah, I said it was nice having a. Uh, a field that was more on keel with what my skill level and stuff is with that, as opposed to being like all high level people. And it's just like, uh. um, so, you know, going into it, that was much more relaxed. Um, plus Ben and Seth care about Sigmar very deeply. Um, they didn't really have like a set TO before that. It was just kind of like a store run event, And like, you know, the store's got to do a thousand different things. So, it was set up and kind of ran, whereas now it, um, Ben and Seth were able to put in the care and effort that the game needs of, of someone who's going to advocate for it. So that that bumped it up to uh, on a level of just fun and enjoyment for sure. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Plus, also, I think this was the first one. I think they did a good job um, making sure that we had fantasy terrain on all the tables, <laughs> not 40k terrain mixed in here and there. I mean, the 40k terrain was not that bad. No, it was alien, so but it still was nice. It's nice getting all the good old-fashioned Sigmar terrain on the table. I was always thinking of that as just Slanesh terrain, that's all. <laughs> <laughs> no, they're working to improve it. It's a great venue. Uh, it was a great, great event overall, so I'm very thrilled with it. Um, like I said, it was a very casual, competitive tournament, I would say. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, um, Matt, what was your goals going into this tournament? Uh, three and two. Nice, nice. That was that was about it. <laughs> Pretty standard. Uh, I had a primary and a secondary goal. Primary was play five games, don't drop, <laughs> just play five games. And secondary <laughs> was two and three. I've been happy with that. Uh, so yeah, let's uh, let's dive into it, Matt. We had round one games. Yep. Um, I guess yep. we, we should probably talk about what we brought. Sorry, we should probably mm-hmm. start there. Mm-hmm. What did you bring, mm-hmm. Matt? What what army are you fielding for your final Age of Sigmar 3.0 GT? Uh, so I went with uh, King Broad Stomp. Uh, so I brought um, Broad, uh, Gate Wrecker, War, Sma- War Stompa, mm-hmm. and then four uh, Man Crushers. And uh, I don't think I'd bring four Man Crushers again. Uh, I don't know. Okay, sure. Seems like a bit a bit much of uselessness. 
uh, myself, I decided to take the old Daughters of Cain, as you do. Uh, and seeing the upcoming rules changes for 4th edition on reinforcements, realized that this is the last GT where I'll be able to bring three units of 30 Witch Elves uh, with Drachy Ganeth, allowing you to break the reinforcement roll to get an extra Witch Elf in for reinforced or double reinforced. So, brought my old Witch Elf Horde out for one last go, and I, I don't mind Drachy. Drachy is a solid sub-faction, good rules, plays into how I like to play. It's not Kraith, it's not my favorite, but I like it. <laughs> Um, yeah, so uh, essentially it was three units of 30 Witch Elves, one Hag on Cauldron, two Hags on Foot, three Gladiatrixes, two Canare, Heartrenders, and one Avatar of Cain. <laughs> three three Gladiatrix, huh? Well, okay, because it's three units of 30, they need a Hag yeah. Queen to give them a buff, and they need a Hag Gladiatrix to give them a buff. It's, it's, just, it's just math, Matt. It's just math. It's true. <laughs> it is math. It is math. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So anyway, let's uh, let's go into it. Um, round one. What'd you play? Uh, we I should say we were in Nexus Collapse to start. Yep. Yep. So I uh, I started off uh, started off strong. Mm -hmm. I uh, I fought uh, I fought my rival Seth. Uh, mm -hmm. who, you know, we always strong we side. always have uh, have these uh, you know epic battles and and you know. Uh, you know, up until now, he's you know never beaten me once. It's never even been close. It's always just been <laughs> he steps up and I just smack him back down. It's like I'm the sun and he is Icarus. But right, uh, right. you know, that's... <laughs> <laughs> no, that's I don't think I've ever. I think this is well, no, no. I, I think this one was this one was probably done by the end of round one as well. He he just somehow seems to to get a lot more out of his two thousand points than I get out of mine. What, what was he playing? <laughs> So he was playing uh, Gitz. Uh, he was okay. playing Gitz okay. with a allied in uh, Kragnos. Yep. Okay. Um, he was going trolls, and it, it was funny. Like I saw, I saw Kragnos. I was like, okay, Kragnos will probably be the big threat. So I'll send my, uh, I'll send the Gate Wrecker after him, and he he did his job. He did his job. The problem was, is nobody else did their job. <laughs> <laughs> Every unit of trolls, like just just like a re a single reinforced unit of trolls, just completely wiped out a giant by themselves. Like on every combat, it was very hard to watch. <laughs> oh boy, that, that that's rough. <laughs> yeah. Uh, um. Again, Seth Seth just knows what he's doing, man. He just oh, he's, he's a good player. He's real good. He's a very good player. Um, but again, we always have a we always have a great time, um, and uh, yeah, like I said it was it was a good match, but uh, it was over pretty quick. Sure, fair. Um, he actually timed it. it; was an hour and eighteen minutes. Wow, total. Yeah, yeah, that's from from beginning to to me being completely wiped off the board. Gotcha, gotcha. Uh, for myself, uh, I played a uh, good friend, Mike Ryan, in his Stormcast. Uh, it's actually interesting because him and I were just chatting beforehand. He's like, we haven't played in a while. And I said, well, we could grudge if you, if you want. And he's like, yeah, let's grudge. And I, I was like, I have 90 witch elves. I have a lot of models. And he's like, well, I got 14 <laughs> Stormcast. I'm like, I will happily grudge you because it'll be a great game. As long as you know what I'm bringing. <laughs> like, you know, like, like, I don't want you to grudge because you're like, ah, Chuck's my friend. Let's have a good game. It's like, Chuck still brought a lot of witch elves. And he's like, no, let's grudge. Because he does not... He's there for, for playing the game. For playing the game's sake. So we decided to play the game. Uh, and looking at my notes... Um, yeah. Uh, uh, Kane did good work. Flooding the field with bodies. Um, it wasn't a too far off game. Uh, it was in the last two rounds... Uh, that he actually made almost made a slight comeback uh, because I dropped battle tactics in the last two rounds, only got objectives, but I killed enough of him that he was only able to max points in one of those, whereas I was maxing points in the rest and he was slightly behind. So I was able to hang on by like three or four points in total to uh, take the win to start off the uh, tournament. Like I said, it wasn't a wasn't a overkill, wasn't a runabout. Like I, he had very few models, but like you know. You make work with what you what you have, 
So like I said, yeah. Um, and me dropping two battle tactics definitely kept it kept it a little bit closer because I, I I literally I built my list because that's what I wanted to bring. I wasn't worried about tactics other than the Canare. And uh, yeah, I realized too, like, oh, if I misplay some of my tactics, I run out of tactics very quickly. I don't want to hear it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I still don't like battle tactics. So. Oh, no. I, I like battle tactics were the bane of my existence this entire tournament. It was like, I can do intimidate the invaders. Ooh, now that list is getting real small. When I can pick. <laughs> it's real thin now. <laughs> um, actually, it, it was funny because uh, he hasn't played a whole ton. Um, but I kept reminding him, like, hey, don't forget your battle tactic. Don't forget your battle tactic. Even though we had the discussion of how much I don't really enjoy them. Um, and yeah. even, like, at the end when I dropped my fourth round one, like, we found him. I'm like, you can get this one. Like, do this one. And then the last one, we were both like, neither one of us have anything. So, yeah. Uh, it was, it was well, he, a good I mean, game. He knows how to use those tempesters, man. That's oh yeah. I'm glad those are the points that they are at. <laughs> yeah, if he had more units of those. That's a different game, man. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I chose to just completely ignore his storm drake the entire time. I was like, nah, I'll just kill everything else. <laughs> oh, so you decided to pull a GW then? Is that yeah, what you're saying? <laughs> exactly, exactly. Um, but yeah, no. Um, it was a good time. Like I said, he uh. He was choosing which objectives were collapsing here and there, and you know, solid game. I, I was, I was like, okay, cool. Uh, wasn't, wasn't a, I wasn't a route, but it wasn't like a, you know, it was, it, it was a comfortable win, uh, and I learned mm -hmm. how I need to play my objectives for the rest of the match matches with my army as I had it. So yeah, nice little one and out to start for myself. So Matt, what about what about game two? We all we all went to we all went to an early lunch actually, because like that wasn't like a, a long time. I think yeah, I had like three beers during lunch, <laughs> and, and it was crazy. Uh, yeah. So my my round two was against um, friend of the show Andrew. Uh, I I forget his last name. Andrew Simmons. I apologize, Andrew. I think Andrew yes, Simmons, yeah. yes, yes. Uh, he brought a fun night hunt list with Nagash. Uh, now with giants, I typically. Uh, whenever I see Night Haunt across the table, I just kind of go, "Well, let's roll some dice, I guess." Let's, because <laughs> <laughs> really, any debuffs the army, like Suns, just crumble, right? Um, you know, and so that's what the whole thing about Night Haunt now is charging in and getting the debuffs. Right uh, now, his list was a little different because he was going high risk, high reward. He brought Nagesh in, and he was really doing everything he could to uh, try and get some teleports off to just smash stuff down. And um, I was fortunate enough during the game to pretty much shut down most teleporting. Okay. Uh, and so that kind of put him on the back foot a little bit. But again, another amazing player. You know, you always see him on the, uh, the, the above the fold when it comes to tournament results. Yep. And, uh, I was proud that I did eventually take Nagesh down. Nice. Uh, took three three megas and two minis, but <laughs> <laughs> so you got you got Nagesh down. We got him down. We got him down. Um, and it was a very close game. Uh, I kind of kept him on his back foot. I was trying to do my best to take out the big units while focusing focusing on Nagash. and I felt like I did it pretty good. Um, so he did end up winning that one still by, uh, I want to say it was by like three points, which okay. I was kind of kicking myself later because I realized that there was there was actually things that I did in round uh, four and round five that were battle tactics that if I would have picked them. Oh, you would have gotten it, the points. I could have scored. Yeah. Now, again, that's also 2020. If yeah. I would have said, Hey, I'm going to do this battle tactic. Then he's just going to go. Okay, well, I'll, I'll stop that one. Move him. Yeah. I'll move this over here yeah. so you don't get it. Like... Exactly. Exactly. Yep. <laughs> and so my second opponent was uh, Adam Goodall. Good. Or sorry, is it Goodall or Goodwell? I, I have poor handwriting. So Adam, uh, he brought Heartwood Sylvaneth. Uh, and let me tell you, I have not played Sylvaneth in a minute, and he brought um, uh, Bethalnos. Bethalnos. Bethalnos? 
Don't ask me. Kernoff. He brought Kernoff. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. Um, and was like, we were in power flux for this one, so it was the alternating. Whoever goes second chooses the pair, pair north, south, east, west one. Um, and uh, he went first uh, on it. I, I think I gave him first turn to just move up and do his thing because I was able to choose the uh, objectives. Um, and I looked at that army and I said, okay. I don't know exactly what to do off the top of my head, but I kind of realized, like, I think the way he's built his army, I need to kill his his Karnathi. You know, he had the sword Karnathi, two units of them. I was like, if I kill those, I can probably tank a Durthu. I can tank Bethalanos. That was kind of, that was kind of it. After that, it's just it's just stuff. Like it wasn't like dryads. I don't care. Hit the lady of the yeah. vines. Didn't really care. Um, so I said, okay, let me focus on those as much as I can. So pretty much what I did. He moved up as much as he could. Um, positioned himself very well, where I was not going to get like a single charge. Like I was going to charge and have to eat two or three units attacking back to my units. Um, but still went in, managed to take out. Karnathi. He did bring him back, uh, but I just killed him again eventually. Um, and so he, he scored, was it four on the first round? I scored three. I scored three every single round. I got a battle tactic and an objective every round. Um, I can't remember how on turn three he dropped a tactic. Uh, I think I think I did something to prevent it. I forget which. I, don't, I wrote down my tactics. I don't know what his were. But it was like one of those he it was the only thing he had to go for, and he went for it and just didn't get it. Uh, I think it was something about killing my stuff, and I managed to keep him alive. Um, both got a grand strategy, so I was able to win that game by one point. Wow. But I I had respect for Sylvaneth after that. <laughs> like, holy cow. <laughs> um, they can do good work, and they can they can definitely push out the attacks and, and you know heal up and all that sort of stuff. Um, they get a l- little lucky that I had a uh, Avatar of Cain. Because like everything was like get, becoming overgrown, and I just started smashing terrain. So it's actually able to smash terrain that helped me keep his buffs down in certain certain <laughs> plays. So because the avatar can smash the rubble, so that was that was nice. Um, yeah, uh, good game. Uh, I think he, I, I don't. It was really funny. I don't think he was really expecting. Cause no one ever sees Drachi too often. Like whenever I was going in, I'm like, okay, well I get like forty three attacks. And they're going to be twos and twos, minus two, one damage. And he's like, what? I'm like, well, I mean, I got every buff off perfectly, so I'm in a good spot. Um, he's like, are you using a C? Fucking elves, man. Yeah, he's like, he's like, are you using, a, using an all-out attack? I'm like, no, I got the avatar nearby, bro. I'm good. <laughs> he's like, damn it. Okay. Um, still, actually, Adam went on, I think, to do best overall. Uh, good, good, great oh. painted army. And I think he, I think, I think it was the only game that he lost, so that makes me feel good. Uh, uh Played a played a strong opponent, uh, but yeah, and I'm sitting here. I'm not even done with day one. I've achieved one of my goals already. I was like, "Oh, this is great!" Yeah. I just got to play four more or uh, three more games, and I've accomplished all my goals. Yep. It's good times. Good times. <laughs> <clears throat> uh, so that what leads us into round three then? Huh? Into round three, which was uh, spring the trap to end the day. Yeah, where. Uh... I then fought Mike. Yeah. <laughs> with his Stormcast. I was if I didn't if I didn't know how much damage that army puts out, I would be I would have been really tempted to um put uh put some 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 megas in reserve just for funsies. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, I was like, no, I'm going to need this to play out exactly as I need to play it. And uh, so Mike and I have played, we we almost play every GT or, or every every event. Uh, so we both know each other very well. Mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. But that, again, knowing, knowing what those Tempestors can do and doing something about the Tempestors is, is entirely different. <laughs> true, very true, yep. Yeah. Um, so I I managed to take care of he put the storm drake front and center so I was able to get that completely surrounded and isolated Real, and had were you able to suplex it 
Uh, yes, 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 I was. perfect. I love it. That's into into the pile of three three Good. megas. <laughs> perfect. That's all I wanted. In uh, life. With that being said, it still took three turns to take down. Yeah, I mean it's a what two up with a nice like four board or something bouncing wounds back. It's it's not an easy target. Yeah, well, I mean, he had uh, so he put he was putting the tempesters into broad. He was putting the fulminators, two groups of fulminators and a group of concussors into the gatebreaker. Um, I mean, it was like it was a lot of pressure, and <laughs> I barely eked out taking out the all the. I forget what they're called, the Draconth Riders or whatever the hell they're, right, yeah. the generic term for them is. I barely took them all out in time. <clears throat> and it got down to the point where there was just the Celestin on um, on Dra- and Dra- Dracoth. Yeah, on the Dracoth. That was the only thing left on the table and he was like yep, you're you're up on points and you're up on models. The, <laughs> whenever whenever you're um, the Suns player has more models on the table than you. Probably over. <laughs> probably yeah, probably over. It's that's fair. That's fair. Um, it was a good good game though. Oh my gosh, it was a very close game. The the only reason why uh, I was able to actually pull out a win was because I got the double in turn three into turn four. Nice. Well, my game three opponent was against Iron Jaws, and neither one of us decided to put anything in reserve because we're just like, nah, that's not what neither one of us are about. (laughs) Now, Matt, I described my armor, armor, my army earlier to you. Yes. You probably noticed a lack of a very specific ingredient to armies. Did you did you pick up on what that what that was? No. Okay, screens. I had zero screens. Ah. Uh, I thought you had three screens of 30 witch elves. That's <laughs> I mean, that's how I play it, but that doesn't exactly equate that way. Um, <laughs> at least not against a few armies, one of those being Iron Jaws with pigs. Um, I got ran over. I was tabled by ter- bottom of three. Um, did manage two tactics, uh, dropped my third one, uh, and then I was just tabled after that. Um, I have to say, though, it was fun. I it, It's always fun playing an Iron Jaws player. And I always have to laugh. I, and my, my opponent was uh, Rob. I think it's Moleshine. Um, yeah. I have never played an Iron Jaws player that didn't know their rules inside and out, but also <laughs> appear to be the most dor- disorganized mess on the table. Like tokens everywhere, <laughs> move and blow up. Like every sort of like <laughs> implement to help movement everywhere. It was just like a whirlwind of stuff. I'm like, I know he's doing everything right. He's got, he's nailing it. He's not like being like, it's, he, Per, per, very precise but it's just like a whirlwind of like i don't know what the hell you're doing but you're doing it have a great time <laughs> like and like i said i knew it was gonna happen i had no screen so i was just like it was literally just he he moved up i moved up failed a few charges which means he charged me and that, that, that that's the game um yeah but still good game uh i was able i was able to keep the score you know kind of close <laughs> <laughs> for for those two rounds I was in it, uh, achieved my uh, grand strategy as usual. Uh, he he could have even like denied me that. Like he had won, he could have denied me that. But like I, I was kind of baiting him out here and there because he had Kragnos in the list, and I would hurt Kragnos just to make him roar, and he would use his movement shenanigans to get away from it to roar. And I'm like, I was like t- telling the TOs, I'm like, hey, do you have a coward award? Because I just want you to know, Rob deserves that coward award because he's moving away. Because he doesn't want to risk uh, rolling a five up to take D three mortal wounds and just just <laughs> and eventually near the end, he he caved to my peer pressure and just started taking it and he didn't take anything uh, and he could have even like so he could deny my grand strategy and ran away from my one remaining hag queen he's like now nah, just run in let's let's fight let's you can have your three points because it doesn't matter he won <laughs> yeah yeah um so it was a fun time um but yeah two and one. Uh, at least I, I, I knew I didn't have the tools to deal with the pigs. I had to get lucky, and I did not get lucky. So, good game, though. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then we go into day two. Yes, yeah, so I'm coming into day two, man. You're coming into day two. How are you feeling? You are one and two. I am two and one. So what, what's your emotions? Where are you at right now? Yeah, I'm fine. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay, so I'm coming in well-rested. It's a beautiful day. I have the windows down. Taylor Swift's new album's blasting. I am 
literally like and i'm taking like back roads to just avoid the highways as much as i can i am <laughs> chill af and as i'm driving like 10 minutes out from the venue something in my brain goes i am going to be the most hyper aggressive player possible i don't care if i fail my buffs i am running and charging immediately i will pull myself out of range of my hero buffs just to do this because that's what i want to do today i yeah I hit my two wins. I was like, that's fine. And I said, if it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. <laughs> I don't know. It yeah. was just like the most chillest, most like de- like downbeat <laughs> song you could think of. My brain's just like, violence. That's what you need in your life. Violence. You get some coffee, you get some breakfast, and you you commit war crimes, sir. <laughs> yeah, mine was, mine was kind of the opposite. On the way in, uh, on my Spotify playlist, uh, Kate Going the Distance came on, and I was like, that's appropriate. <laughs> there you go all right so i mean i had a great breakfast with mike nice coffee local coffee shop down there um and hey game four uh let's see what the heck is what scenario is this again uh what was that one that was the one where it was the six he has six objectives three, yeah three, fountains three of frost side. fountains of frost yeah where you uh, don't want to have more than three units on an objective, otherwise it could explode. Which I wasn't really all that worried about. <laughs> well, yeah, you, you have three models. So. Uh, <laughs> right. So uh, I was the opposite of you. I was hoping to swing by and get some breakfast on the way in, but there's uh, some construction on the highway from my house to there, down to one lane, and I got behind a trucker that decided that he wanted to do 30 in a, in a 50. Right. The entire way. Yep. And then so... Uh, by the time I got there, it was it was really, really close. I was like, oh, maybe I can swing through the drive-thru, drive-thru wrapped around the building. I'm like, cool, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so my opponent was uh, uh, Andrew Chadwick with Ogre Maw Tribes. Okay. And uh, I got to say, it was a, it was a, a, the whole game was a surprise. I was like, he had... Uh, one of the stompy monsters, and everything else was foot ogres. Oh which... wow, that's a very reasonable res- person, <laughs> reasonable list from an ogre player. I'm used right. to like twelve monster right. trucks that charge turn one, eighty-seven inches, <laughs> and do thirty million mortal wounds. And you're just like, I don't know what's going on. Well, that's what was funny. Is like, so I saw, um, I, I saw ogres whenever I looked at the listing and looked at the pairings, and I was like, oh. Well, I'm going to lose. And then I, I sit down at the table and then I see all foot ogres. And I'm like, oh, I'm going to win. <laughs> <laughs> um, and we had one of the most tactical non-destruction battles. <laughs> you put your thinking caps on and you're like, we're going to be gentlemen about this, sir. So. <laughs> well, turn one, so he gave me the turn. Turn one, I didn't move. Wow. All okay. I did was move myself in position for my uh, battle tactic next round. Okay. And ended my turn. And then he did the exact same thing. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> so then round two, we preserved turn order. He moved up. Um, well, I, I basically got into the position so I can get my battle tactic. And then I also was trying to position myself to accept the charge. Right. Because I knew there was nothing I could do about that at that point. Like, he was too far away for me to charge him, but I knew I was going to be close enough for him to charge me no matter where I went. Right. So that's what happened round two. Uh, and it, it was really funny. I brought... So Mike was giving me a hard time for my dice rolls. Right even though this is a strategy game and your dice rolls don't matter. All right. And luck isn't a, isn't a factor. So, but <clears throat> I still heeded his advice. I'm like, I will bring in brand new dice that are not, uh, not chess. <laughs> okay. Okay. We'll see these dice only understood the, the average from a long term perspective, but the short term, they did not understand that. It, I, whenever he was attacking me, I was sitting there rolling and just nothing but ones, a sea of ones. <laughs> then it came time for me to attack back. And it was nothing but a sea of sixes. <laughs> sixes as far as the eye can see. 
<laughs> I literally destroyed almost half of his army in one combat. Oh, jeez. Okay. Uh, so then we roll off. Uh, he gets the double. He goes again. I almost finish him off. Then my turn comes. He doesn't have a model left on the table. Okay. Good, good, so, good talk. So here's the problem, though, is uh, the bad dice roll are preventing me from getting every single tactical die roll I need. Uh, like I was going to use, um, whenever you have broad stomp, that's the one where you can take the monstrous action to roll 3d6 and then move and capture an objective. Uh, well, I, the plan was to roll o to walk over something and capture an objective behind him and get an additional objective to get one, two, and more, and to get the battle tactic. I did that twice, and twice I rolled three on three dice. Did you? Did you have? Oh wow, that's that's ridiculous. Okay. Uh, no, no. To be fair, I think the second time it was four on three dice. Still not not four. enough. Gotcha. <laughs> And if I, either one of those would have been a five, I would have won the game. Right. But but because he had uh he was he basically got there was one turn where he um uh, turn two he's able to come down and capture my my third objective. Yeah. So from turn two, I was not able to get one, two, and more. I was only able to get one and two, and then I also ran out of battle tactics. Like there's just yeah, you just run not out. enough battle yeah. tactics in this GHB for giants. And King Broadstomp did a little bit of help, but uh, like I took there's a hold on, there's a really dumb battle tactic name for whenever you um, you know Broadstomp has the ability to pick up terrain and throw it. Yeah, yeah. So that there's a battle tactic for that called Good Shot Her Her. <laughs> so he had one hero at one health and so i'm like okay i have nothing else i'll good shot her her yeah so i i thankfully rolled two to pick up the terrain i then rolled d6 to see how many attacks i get i rolled a one okay all right and then uh i needed a four to hit i did all out attack I rolled a one, and I'm like, okay, so I don't get that battle type. <laughs> okay, all right. Hey. So by the end of round five, we actually have to play it out to see where the points go. <laughs> we even had to roll off to see who gets the double to see if I can take away his objectives quick enough to prevent him Interesting. scoring. Okay. Yeah, yeah, as you do. <laughs> so I managed to double him going into round four, so I'm able to take away his objective. And um, so our score by the end of five is dead even. Okay. And on top of that, we so we both 2020, and then we both took the grand strat that uh, there will be no wizards on the board at the end of the turn or at the end of the game. Easy. So yeah. we both get three points. So we're both at 23 23. The battle pack had it. So if you have a tie, it comes down to uh, battle tactics. And he had one more battle tactic than me. So, ah, so you got despite, the win. Despite not having any models. For two fifths of the game, he still won. <laughs> Thank you, Battle Tactics. Glad you're still around. Yep. yep. All right. <laughs> still sounds like a fun game. Hey. Oh, it was an amazing game. It was an amazing game. I was I was having an absolute blast. Um, and again, just remember the the fourth edition is is going to be all about modules and and the, the first GHB. First GHB isn't going to have grand strats, which means the second one probably will, and they'll get rid of battle tactics for that one. Hopefully, Clearly. that's 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 the hope. I'm just I'll ignore module six for the time being, though. <laughs> um, so my game four was against a lovely younger gentleman, uh, Michael, and he was playing an Ozark Bone Reaper list with Nagash and Archon, and boy, oh boy, <laughs> that's Ooh. that's a lot to face. <laughs> That sounds like that needs a cup of coffee with a shot of whiskey in it just to <laughs> just hear it. <laughs> um, now I want to say this: Michael was one of the cleanest 
kindest opponents I've had in a long while. He's like one of those opponents you play and you're just like, I don't win or lose. <coughs> I'm thankful for this game. Constantly reminding me of like, hey, don't forget about like, don't put three get because I had a bunch of units. He's like, hey, don't put three on. He might take some wounds. I'm like, thank you. I would and I position it. He was very forgiving in that. <coughs> so obviously reciprocated that way. Um, but yeah, he put Nagash in the back. Some horses off to one side. Some units. And, I, and I, I was like, my game plan is to run forward and see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> Always a good idea with Bone Reapers. <laughs> well, he didn't have a ton of Bone Reapers. It was just Archon and Nagash. Oh, I, yeah. could, I could handle yeah. the rest. <laughs> like, those two, I'm like, we'll see. <laughs> um, so I was like, I, I definitely outdropped him. So I was like, I'll go first. I buffed up and I ran forward. I was like, hyper aggressive. I don't care. Let's go. Um, and then, like, of course, he tried to counter punch. Now, he was in his own way, and Nagash was getting spells off. I'm like, that's fine. Whatever. It's fine. Like, he's doing damage. It's just, that's what it is. You just deal with it. Um, very, very bloody match. Uh, I'm killing his stuff. He's killing my stuff. Uh, I am pushing really hard. So, the first three rounds, I max points. Um, first three rounds for him, instead of 5-5-5, five, 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 he goes 4-4-5. Four, four, I was like, okay. I said, but... Nagash and Archon is probably a tipping point. Can I survive a tipping point for that extra round I need? Uh, and I couldn't. <laughs> so, bottom of three, <laughs> I I wasn't tabled by I was I wasn't killed till five. But like I was like down to just heroes and like hit you know Archon and Nagash were able, and like they were able to cap off my heroes pretty easily. So my last two rounds, I got zero, no objectives, no battle tactics. <laughs> he maxed the last three rounds, so. You know, and if you do the math, uh, he was able to take the win there. But it was an amazing game. We were laughing the whole time. Uh, <laughs> there was one time, it was like the third or fourth cast. He miscast with the gosh. He's like, "Ha, huh, that sucks." <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> it was just, it was just funny. Um, but like I said I, I was able to deal with everything else. It's just I, I chose to ignore Nagash, uh, and I tried to deal with Archon, but his ability to teleport after combat stuff it's just it's it's hard to deal with and he heals up too fast for for the list i brought since i didn't really have any shooting but now, good game with the gosh miscasting all those times did you make a reference of him being unable to cast with that many boobies in his face did you do <laughs> did you pull that one i, I did not I, I didn't didn't pull that one out come on man, come on, man. <laughs> um, i did like i the i took nullstone dust just because i didn't want to remember that to on spell so like every time Every time my opponent was just like, I'm going to do magical dominance, I'm like, Nullstone Dust. They're like, okay. I'm like, yeah, if it works, it works. If it doesn't, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> um, and actually, Nullstone Dust probably kept one of my units alive for an extra round because he had to use Primal to get something off. And he's like, and still didn't go off. And there's like a one and a two and a six. And he's just like, uh... I'm gonna I'm gonna ignore that I guess because like he didn't want to he didn't want to miscast with both his casters that round so it was like it was yeah, yeah. Nullstone Dust was like a champ that time and also it got rid of um one of the endless spells <laughs> it's just like boom gone <laughs> five up get you out of here um a solid game Michael's a, like and he's young too he's a young kid so you know I I could see him being like on a uh, a team sport and you know very good player and like he could play anything uh and i think he even said he brought that because it was just like it was easy it's what he wanted to bring he didn't want to have to like bring yeah. a ton of stuff but yeah i'm two and two going to the last round is what it is though matt and then i had like a two-hour lunch break i think <laughs> which is great um, yeah yeah we, we all had a good time going out and mm -hmm, mm -hmm. just relaxing and shooting the breeze yeah it was almost like I had a whole game of rest in between <laughs> so then we come up on to round five, Matt. Yep, yep. Go where ahead. they they couldn't they couldn't find an opponent good enough to face me, so I got the buy. <laughs> <laughs> no, the uh, basically they did the they did the roulette. Mike got the buy round four. Yeah, they were and... doing they were doing random pairings within your win loss record, right? Yeah. And so then uh, he also got randomed. To be to get the buy round five, and so yeah, he had a round by four. Since, so yeah, yeah, right. Since we know Ben and Seth, he they came over to us and asked like, "Hey, does anyone want the buy? We'll random it again if not." And and I was like, you know what, I got I got some stuff going on that you know I wouldn't mind being home for. So 
uh, I'll just take the buy. And Mike and... wanted to play. Mike was like, I really would like right. to play. So, well, I would. I wouldn't expect anyone to get get the buy twice. <laughs> That's also very fair. Um, but yeah, and then like, so, the, to be fair, you you were in the losers bracket. You weren't up for any awards, right. so it was like whatever. Right. <laughs> yeah, it's like I didn't lose well enough to get any loser awards, and I wasn't certainly winning enough to get any winner awards. So, <laughs> actually, what was interesting is, um, because like the person I was playing was supposed to play you before they did the repairing and stuff. Oh, geez. Because I walked up to the table, and he's like, you're not Giants. I'm like, I'm the opposite of Giants. And, like, <laughs> I was like, I was like, they they probably just repaired it, and, like, he, he refreshed it. So my opponent was Chris. Yeah, yeah. And he, that's the one I've been playing for, like, six months, had Stormcast. Um, uh, his kitty caters are going to be gone soon, unfortunately. But he was, even he was like, eh, it is what it is. I'll, I'll buy a new Stormcast. He, he liked it. He had a good time with the army. Um, and we were in... Geometric Pulse. Um, yeah, it's, uh, you know, we're walking through, and he's like, do you know what my army does? I'm like, yeah, I know what Stormcast do. It's fine. Blah, blah. You know, it's like, get, get, you want to give me a refresher? Give me a brief refresher. All good. I was like, have you ever played Dodge the Cane before? He's like, yes, but I don't see the big snake lady and all the snakes with bows on your on your army. I'm like, that's because I don't play those. <laughs> Let me tell you what my army does. And I'm walking him through it, and his eyes are just like, bruh what you do what i was just like it sounds like a lot i promise you i will be dead by turn three or four with most of my stuff like most <laughs> likely three. Said, and i won't be shooting in the hero phase so. exactly yeah yeah i'm like i won't even probably combat you in the combat phase because like whatever um i don't have a ton of cp but it's like he like he was going into that match like oh what am i fighting and i was just like don't worry it's gonna be fine uh so <laughs> It's pulse, um, deploy, and like I said, I go to buff up. I miss every single prayer. No buffs. <laughs> and I'm like, no. I said, just go. So I ran on, on top onto all the objectives, and uh, the pulse was dictated. It was going from my right to the left. Um, so I was going to have it for. He was all he was all in my left flank. And I had the whole right flank to myself. Um, so I was like, okay, I'll hold it for most of it. I was, And I waffled, too. I was like, eh, which way do I send it? I'm like, I'll send it that way. Max my points early, because I'm probably not going to have models by the end of the game because of the damage output. So I'll just max as much as I can. Hopefully I can just outscore him. Um, and he played a beautiful game. Like he, he very much was good with tactics where he was like, planning ahead, thinking. Like, even in the last round, like when there was very few models left on both sides, he was making sure to get the most out of all the stuff you know signs of of a good player in the making for sure um and even by the end too i was like like he, it was i think it was like turn three we're laughing having a good time and he's like you're right you, you don't have a lot left i'm like i told you <laughs> i said now that doesn't mean i'm i'm gonna not score anything but i don't have a lot left <laughs> um yeah so i started maxing very early uh first round we both scored three uh, then I scored six, he scored three, I scored seven, he scored five, I scored six, he scored seven, I scored one, he scored six, but the ace up my sleeves, I dropped my last tactic. Um, I it, it was it was a crapshoot. I the last round I had one hag queen left and it was fighting a unit of uh, liberators, uh, and I needed to that's kill. A, that's a fifty fifty battle right there. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I have plenty of attacks. Like at that point, I'm fully buffed up with all my. Uh, blood chart table so i was like i felt confident that i could do it and i was able to take him off hold the one objective to score one point um <laughs> it, was, it was more sort of spite um but uh he even realized it too that he had chosen the wrong battle tech or grand strategy his grand strategy was to have only a redeemer battle line unit left on the table now my battle line was gone but he had uh one of the Dracoth units that was battle line tempestors mm. yeah mm -hmm. so he had that yeah. and liberators i completely mm. ignored the tempestors i'm like i i have scored three points by ignoring this unit i'll just deal with the shooting <laughs> shooting was good um was it just two or was it a full thing of six it's full thing of six so i was like screw it i'm not touching it Oof. yeah Oof. so like, he realized that mistake um near the end but because of that i was able to uh, get my grand strategy he was not so i was able to win by uh two points um Wow. So good game. Even at the end, he was just like, I was more scared of that list than I should have been. I was like, I did the same thing with Giants. <laughs> I'm like, I can, <laughs> I've never lost against Giants, but I'm always very fearful of them. Um, 
but great great game uh i was thrilled because at the end it was just like we double checked like three or four times because i was like making sure like that i get a three and two? Oh my gosh i got a three and two we did it boys we had some <laughs> gas in this tank <laughs> felt good felt good i won't lie i mean it was like i went i i overachieved my goal i uh, didn't have to take any trophies or prize support home it was a good time and actually he won <laughs> i forget he he was like best of the losers bracket Oh, so wow. he actually won a uh, award. So he won up and I think he got um, box set. I think Seraphon or something like that. I don't know. Like it was a it was a big it was a battalion box. It was, it was pretty nice. Yeah. I see. I still have. I'm still sitting on because that was. I saw that box. I'm like that was the the Christmas box for Seraphon. And yeah. I bought one of those. And I was like, if I won another one of those, I would have be forced at that point to start Seraphon. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. I, I looked at that too because like I was like, uh, there's chances for random awards potentially. And I was like, there was the Death Starter box, which had Luke of I and like everything I want in an army. And then oh, there's the Seraphon, which too. I didn't have. Yeah, I was like, I did. I, usually, if I win prize support, I give it away. But I'm like, if I get a chance to take either one of those, I'm taking it because <laughs> I'll start that army right away. <laughs> um, but still, um, great, great event, great venue, great event. It was nice. That's a local thing, too. I had a great time. I was thrilled to go three and two. Um, it's a great send off for third edition as far as the GT goes. I still, like I said, have one more RTT. It's a food drive event, so very casual. Um, left before the uh, edition change, but yeah, Matt, what'd you think overall? Oh, I thought it was great. I thought it was great. Looking forward to seeing what um, what we can do in fourth and um, yeah, yeah, again, yeah. I'm glad. I'm glad Fabricators is 15 minutes down the road. Yes, yeah, that's, that's very true. <laughs> Um, nice little spot too. Well, yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, nice little swan song send off. Thank you. Third edition. Uh, you were not my favorite, but I played a lot of games of you, so I can't really complain that much. I, I, I like, I like Sigmar. I just don't like battle tactics. <laughs> <laughs> and if you want to know more about that, uh, then definitely like, as I mentioned earlier in the show with Alex, uh, go check out my recent appearance on Warhammer weekly this past week. Um, which also means we're going to just, we're not even going to open them. We're just going to, briefly mention the news of what was going on because like, we talked about it in depth on warmer weekly uh matt i know you'll talk about it in depth on big m's to get your full opinions so you'll you'll see it obviously since it'll be up hours after this episode that's true uh, yeah, you're gonna be a day after it yeah, cole and yeah. i cole and i went the distance on this one at three hours and 20 minutes <laughs> i see that's spicy all right well that's it we won't spend a lot of time on this um, I'm happy to be you. Well, you've got another two and a half hours. You've got two and a half hours more left for, for just the news. Matt, <laughs> Matt, what we're going to do is we're going to hang up this call when we're done. I'm going to set this video to process and we're going to go play hell divers. All right. That's, that's not like a better oh, time yeah. than complaining about battle tactics. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, actually, so battle tactics, the battle tactics, tactics article came out. Um, I don't like their implementation. Um, I, I think they're going to be easier to keep balanced. But I think they'll continue to cause the same issue that I have personally with it, while still being a good tool for making a balanced game system. Yeah, I mean, as far as that goes, my my biggest points against battle tactics are a it. So anyone that watches Power Hour knows one of the things that I'm most against is when someone goes onto a forum or something and says, "Hey, I got." x army where do i go from here and they get the plethora response of just get what looks cool yeah because uh, while i i fully uh support that you should find a way to put the units you like the look of the most in your army mm -hmm. that's not the best answer especially in the world where we have dumbass battle tactics like surround and destroy yeah. where you have to have three models on three board edges or stand in it's four like, quadrants or some stuff yeah right and it's like so now you need okay well what if i like all the slow stuff or what if i like the stuff that has to stay within 12 inches of a hero okay well you have to build your list in a certain way in order to take those right and especially if you have like i mean imagine i'm trying to imagine the world because uh, again, the first battle tactic they showed was be would be in the center of the board and three inches away from enemy units. 
uh, I forget the exact wording, yeah. but <clears throat> I'm trying to think. I'm like, when in the world am I going to be able to do that with KO as they are right now? KO, that's rough. Uh, I, I did come around in this one with Dodgers Kane. Tom on Wherma Weekly helped me with that. He's like, you do it with your heroes who are in your backfield the second or third round. I'm like, okay, you got me. That narratively makes sense for me. But I, I'm with you. The problem with Battle Tactics is they're either not achievable by everybody or right. my personal beef is they take me out of playing my army. Right. My army right. doesn't want to surround and destroy. It doesn't uh, wants to surround and destroy, but surround and destroy isn't standing in three very far <laughs> off points. It's surrounding you and stabbing you to death. Right. So. I mean, that's one of the things, one of the issues where, you know, you have people, some people complain about playing against someone that doesn't have painted armies because it takes them out of the 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 mystique or the the you know hey we're we're having the little dudes fight yeah <clears throat> for me it's battle tactics because again like why are zombies moving like that <laughs> yeah <laughs> why why do zombies care about getting revenge on the my general. general that died you know like it, it's you know, well of course with that one but like why are je- why are zombies trying to do bait and switch or bait and swap or whatever it right. is like and it they're they're the the correct term for these is not battle tactics. They are battle chores. Right, right. That's, that's and like I said, I mean, <clears throat> so and, and that takes for me a, out for a competitive game system. That's fine, and these are going to work great. The problem I've come to realize is I don't know if I want a fully perfectly balanced battle game system. Well, like I said, you know, I mean, like I, I, goes... I want there to be some things that are just wildly off. I I I would rather even. I don't mind walking into a... I don't want to ever feel like I have no shot, but I don't mind right. uphill battles. Uh, and I feel like the more balance we get, the more balance you get, the less, less flavorful the game becomes. I mean, I see that in 40k a little bit. And that's well, the worry. I mean, but like, and battle tactics, I think, are the main cause of that right now. For me. Right now, people will say that this is the most balanced that Age of Sigmar has ever been. I will agree to that. But it's from um, a very specific lens of matched play competitive tournaments right and and again though like i just said i was playing sons and because of you know i I didn't get enough reps in with them to learn the extra strategic way to run them right now the battle tactics there's what i think there's three or four that are do you have a wizard no yeah can't get Right. <clears throat> and so uh, I, I, I think those those wild swinging ones are probably in the past now, just like the book ones being in the past. Um, and, and here's the thing, like I'm also against I'm I'm personally against them getting rid of the battle tome battle tactics whole cloth. It's see that's such a hard thing because I I am for it for the fact that it makes things easier and more balanced as far as writing universal battle tactics. I'm against it because it was the only battle tactics I had that were flavorfully fitting my <laughs> army, which is what I want. But also, I had very easy ones. They right. put, they, no, they, were, again, they, were, they could not write balanced across book by book, no. just from the nature no. of what the game is. So yeah, and that's basically where it comes down to is like, A, how about we go with the book gives you one or two battle tactics, and two, we actually make an attempt to make the battle tactic achievable by the army by playing the way the army wants to play you know right. like <clears throat> um because like i look at um you know i look at the the order battle tactics so again going to ko well again we know a whole bunch of stuff's changing and we don't know where fourth edition's going blah 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 blah. Right. if you watch power hour you know i've i'm done with that disclaimer at this point yeah but based on KO right now, I have to put myself as a, at a disadvantage by dropping off units to leave them out buck naked <laughs> to then fly high to then escape to go to other quad- quadrants. So then next turn I can go back and pick those units back up to put them back on the boat so they don't get destroyed so then I can go back to playing the game. Right. Or me, I have I have to take Canari yet again. I'm forced to take Canari so I can score right. this, that tactic. Yeah. 
so so again like as far as i look at battle tactics all they are is just multiple layers upon layers of things to prevent you from playing the game the way you want to play it and building army lists the way you want to build them yep okay moving on then because yeah it's like i said it, i I don't, I don't enjoy them but i'm going to play this game and i will play with them when i'm told i have to play yep. with them and i'm not going to whenever we play about, yeah even we're not using battle tactics, battle tactics. No. <laughs> not at all we could we could take one battle tactic and call it a grand strategy, and that's what we fight for. Yes. Or or more importantly, we'll get to we could just use that deck from Spearhead. Ooh, yes. I'm but, looking forward to that very much. Yes, we'll talk Spearhead at the end because I think we're both excited about that. Um so uh Eldritch manifestations, endless spells, manifestations, those lures. Um let's not go too deep on this. I, I I'm very much a, a fence sitter. I don't hate this, I don't love it. My only thing I don't love is I hate having to take things potentially in my army that I may or may not use just in case I want to use it, which is like the smallest downside possible. And I haven't seen the rules yet for my stuff, so it could be fine and I want to use them. They actually enhance my army and give it great flavor. But so generally, I'm in the middle on it. I don't hate it. I don't love it. It is what it is. Matt, where do you sit on this whole endless spell um, thing? Now, I, I will say this. I love that you can kill them. <laughs> yeah, I absolutely love uh, it, and, and I said it on Warhammer Weekly. Here's what I hope for, like the terrain and the and the the spells are. I hope that everyone was just running away from the endless spells because they're just like, oh my god, these are so brutal, they're so t- terrible. And I I want to believe that there was just like one random dwarf, whether it was Gauntrek or not, that just says, no, I'm gonna hit this thing with my axe, and he did, and he heard it, and everyone's <laughs> like, oh, we 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 can do this. <laughs> okay, let's do this. And they, they, like you know, Sylvaneth and they are like, okay, we'll punch it. And Lumineth, they're like, oh, we can shoot this. Great, let's do it. <laughs> I I love that you can actually kill them now. It's a great counterplay. It's a great because they could be screens. They could be you can counterplay with them. I, I I like that a lot. Yeah, I um. So as far as the terrain, I love that you will be able to damage terrain. Mm-hmm. I think there's first off, I think most terrain, like I look at the the magma forge yeah. on a three up save. I'm like, well, a giant mass of like solid aether gold has a three up save. And it's like a shitty. And it's like right. But like I think I feel like terrain should be like a two up, two up, six up, and, and there should be some sort of penalty towards shooting because I feel like they're just going to be massive targets, uh, regardless of it's, of what they are. It, it remains to be seen because here's the thing: if someone's shooting your right. your forge, they're not shooting your other stuff, which is maybe okay. Yeah, but with eight wounds at a three up save, that's going to be one turn of shooting. Three up save, six up forward. I think it's two. Shooting is a lot yeah. less maybe range you, from you, what they said now, so that we don't know it, but that's what they said. So they might be close enough that you can counter punch it and survive. In the in the non Chuck world, a six of ward is bad. That's, That's true. <laughs> yeah, six of ward is easy. As, Here, I'm gonna roll dice. The... I'm, I'm gonna roll daughter's cane dice right now. It's a six. Okay. Ward <laughs> save, Matt. Your argument's invalid. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure. Again, if I had. 40 wounds that I had to get a save on, I might get two. <laughs> Listen, if you want me to roll two up save, not going to happen. You want a six up ward? I got right. you, bro. <laughs> right. Uh, now, as far as the endless spells go, I'm going to have to see how it how it feels the... on the table. Yeah. I, at first blush, I don't like the idea of essentially everyone getting a lot of stuff. Uh, free. Endless spells. And then on top of that, I Again, we'll also have to see how the rules actually are written when they come out. Right. I don't like the idea of you having to choose between your faction terrain and endless spells. Uh, I don't know if they put the well, terrain. Said, the, the article... I don't think the terrain is listed as manifestations. It's just faction terrain. Okay. So I, I, it's just you choose your your army specific manifestation or a general one, but you get your terrain either way. Or a stupid, dumbass Kron Spine Incarnate. <laughs> Which we, I'm, we're all curious if that's good. Like, they're too good or not. That it's, thing you, better give your opponent victory points every every round it's on the table. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it secondly was a 500-point model in the last edition, so like we're all like, right. what does this mean? 
I mean, I have to assume, like, finally, it, what I love is, like, they spent a very long amount of time trying to convince people it's not an endless spell just to make it an endless spell a year later. Like, Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, I will say this. If if you're, you're not a fan of the Manifestation Lores, here's the solution I found last night. Play KO. KO is a beautiful army. It's fun to paint and build anyway, so do it anyway. Um, that spell comes out. You take your take your boat, you take your shots, you split your shots, half into the endless spell, half into the wizard. Even if you don't kill either one, you're sending a message. <laughs> Alright. That's that's not I like I said, I, I it remains to be seen. I, I'm I'm nonplussed on it. It is what it is. Uh Matt very cautious. Understand yeah, listen, understandably for me, like, don't... I'm 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 interested to see how it plays. Right. But the back of my brain is saying this probably is not the smartest. Right. My only worry is the fact that they took away the points for it, which means they took away a lever for them to adjust it with. So, yeah. But anyway, we'll move past that for now. On to the happier times. Full happy. Uh, the Battle Tome supplement for Dark Oath released for free. Yeah. And, and I don't want to deep dive on this, Matt, but. It's a 28-page supplement that's mostly lore. <laughs> yes, now, it is. I'm just thrilled anytime I see things of just, here's a bunch of lore, go nuts, read it, have a good time. Because they could have just put out the War Scrolls and like some General Allegiance buildings and called it good. But no, they, yeah. they either had this left over because it was supposed to be out with the previous Slave's Darkness and just had shipping <laughs> issues, or yeah. they'll put it in the next book because they pre-wrote wrote it for the next book when Slave's Darkness comes out. Either way, I don't care. I like lore and it's fun to see. Just happy. I'm happy for its existence. Yeah, yeah. Honestly, I mean, it, whenever I saw that, whenever I actually like saw it come out, I really started. I, I had to fight off, and I, I did successfully fight off the temptation. But I was very tempted to. I was like, man, that could be a really cool army. And I think if they would have had like an archer unit and a wizard hero, I think I wouldn't be able to resist. But oh yeah. But just knowing that, like, and and uh, sorry for everyone that's going to watch both shows, I, I say this almost full cloth from there. It's like I'm fascinated that whenever, if you if you want to honestly think about what is the average human in the mortal realms, it's one of these guys. Yeah, not someone from Cities of Sigmar. Yeah, so, yeah, because Sages of Sigmar are like they're born and raised in like this dogmatic faith, whereas the Dark Oath came to it for survival instincts. It's a base. It's a more right. base human. Well, again, you're talking about it, essentially. It's like if you were in America, are you? Did you? Were you born in New York, Chicago, or L.A.? No, then you're <laughs> <laughs> you're a Dark Oath. Like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's good. Well, I, listen, I yeah, it's just great to see. Um, but we're gonna end here. On a brief chat, we'll talk about Spearhead briefly. I think we'll do a, probably a whole episode on Spearhead after the edition launches. Uh, I'm excited for it. Matt, we've seen two articles in Spearhead talking about how it plays. It's four rounds. There's balance. It's such as like some units can be reinforced. Some bigger units that are stronger, more powerful, don't come in until near the end of the game or back half of the game. Right. We've also seen that Battle Tactics is going to be like this deck where you pull out cards. There's 12 cards. And you pull out three at a time. And it, you can either use command ability, or you can use a battle tactic to score points. Um, not to mention unique war scrolls to slim things down, and get you a nice intro into the game. Uh, they've ripped out modules to, and just like magic is a module, so it's not in this game, but the magic's just on the war scrolls as an ability. So, general yeah. thoughts: What are you thinking about Spearhead? Uh, I think it's uh, I think it's going to be a lot of fun. I hope that it shows. I hope that it is a little bit more embraced than Combat Patrol was. Yeah, Combat uh, Patrol, good intentions and just feel like it. Just feel like it missed. Just right. That was up. that was the that was uh, that was early access. Early yeah. access spearhead is what that. That's, that's correct. <laughs> now the other thing I I gotta say I gotta I gotta throw a little bit of big M cynicism in here. Okay. Okay. Because they have now like quadrupled down. On how balanced this is. Yeah, they, they do continuously say that. And it's like, okay, sure. So so now that is going to be on the docket of things that I'm going to be paying attention to. Like <laughs> Yeah, for sure, for sure. A lot of people will be. Um and also, 
it's a double it's a it's like a it's a catch-22 for them because it's either unbalanced and i'm going to give them hell for it or it's going to be balanced and i'm going to give them hell for not balancing <laughs> their main game <laughs> that's it's true it's very true um here's so the like, spearhead you did it with spearhead why can't you... <laughs> yeah. here's the long and short of it for me either this game is incredibly balanced and and fun to the point that I would be excited to go and play five games in a day for a one day tournament with it to the, uh, and just enjoy it and like treat it as a competitive game. That's easy to travel with and, and such like that Four, it's so unbalanced, but it's so easy to play. That's the great beer and pretzels game. And it's just like, you just put it in your back pocket and pull it out and you're like, let's have some fun. Let's play some spearhead. Now I'm looking forward. I'm looking forward to some hyper competitive, Three day, fifteen round spearhead <laughs> in the near future. <laughs> well, hey, listen. Either way, hyper competitive or not, the fact that like it it's, it can give me either one of those it seems like what's going to be, and it's a good entry point for new players. An actual good entry pl- point for new players. Great, I love it. I'm a fan of it. Uh, I I don't hate the battle tactic implementation of it in that game. Um, yeah. I'm not saying I'm a fan of drawing cards for my battle tactics, but I just I. The battle tactics I read I like better than the ones I've read for the main game. Um, yeah, yeah. And the other thing is, like, assuming that it is going to be a success, it, I mean, we've all painted so much that there's nothing that we can't. Uh, I mean, you can get done in a week, but anyone else in the group can't finish one of those boxes in a month. I I paid I painted fifteen of them in ten days. I, I know you did. Okay, just there's a YouTube video. <laughs> Go check it out, everybody. Um, yeah. Oh, well, here's the thing too. Like, even they're putting out the rules for free for it, so I' pretty sure I'll probably have most units from most spearhead boxes that I have armies for already. I might need a unit here or there. Yeah. Well, like I was saying, like uh, whenever Cole and I were kind of testing the different armies to see what I liked, uh, I didn't think I was good enough with the army to be competitive with it, but I actually really liked Zinch. So if this works, maybe I'll go out and buy a Zinch box and just have fun with that. Yeah. Like I said, I, I this and like I want to get like a little mini travel case. Like if it's if it's as fun as, as my brain wants it to be. <laughs> like you know, like like I, everything everything's coming up spearhead. Um I will go buy a box, like a small little mini travel case and put a spearhead army in it. Like I will go buy a Dodgers Cane spearhead. And put it in, and paint it specifically for Spearhead and put it in there and be like, cool, there we go. And then just when I travel for work, just carry it with me in case somebody wants to play or go do tournaments yeah. with it. Um, I, it's not going to take over the main game, but it might be a no, fun alternative no. way to play. Um, plus, if you're going to go to a tournament and it's one we have to travel, it's like, well, then put Spearhead units in your main army and that way in the evening you can play Spearhead for fun. <laughs> right, right. All right. Well, I think that's uh, that. That will wrap it up. Because like I said, uh, I went into a deep with Warhammer Weekly. You're going to go into a deep with uh, the, sh- the Big M's Power Hour that comes out the day after this podcast is released. So, uh, yeah, I think we can. I think we can wrap it up there for the night. Put a bow on it. What's that? Put a bow on it. The bow <laughs> is on, sir. Matt, uh, any any parting words for you before we head out for the night? Yeah, go play Conquest. All right. Everybody, uh, I hope you've enjoyed Matt's time on the Strength Hammer <laughs> Network. Uh, he will officially be gone. Uh, the episode he promised you will be the last one he puts out. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Um, until next time, everybody, this has been uh, the Strength Hammer Podcast. And stay strong, I'm strong. <laughs> happy hobbying and stay Stormcast strong. <laughs> mm-hmm.